Welcome to Bike Social, welcome to more homeschooling, and in this episode we're going to talk about weight. But don't worry, I'm not going to put you on a diet or anything, we're just going to look at how weight affects your motorcycle. So this is a generic motorcycle that weighs 200 kilograms, let's go with that. It's going to have a rider, fully kitted, and it's going to have a pillion with full kit and maybe a rucksack and some luggage. So the bike's now gone from 200 kilograms to 400 kilograms. We've doubled the weight of the bike. On a very powerful bike, it's not so much going to affect the performance. But on a slow bike or a mid-capacity bike, doubling the weight of the bike is going to affect the performance. So when you come to overtake cars, when you accelerate, the performance has decreased because you've doubled the weight. Again, when you de-accelerate, as in when you brake, Braking distances will change because you've doubled the weight of the bike. Now in a very simplistic way, we're going to look at a ladder. So you can imagine this is a ladder. If I put you at the top of the ladder and I push the ladder left or right, the ladder falls easily. If you're in the middle of the ladder, the ladder doesn't fall as easily left or right. And if you're at the bottom, it's really difficult to push the ladder left or right. And this is a very broad, simplistic way of looking at where to put weight on a bike. So if we put the weight high, the bike will fall into the corner in the same way the ladder falls easily. But then it's difficult to pick the ladder back up because your weight is at the top. And again, this is a very simplistic way of looking at weight on a bike. So where should we put weight on a motorcycle? Ideally, it's kind of in this area. This is called mass centralization. We're trying to get the weight low and forward. If we have all the weight towards the back, we have problems with stability. <clears throat> if we have the weight towards the front, when we brake hard, it'll lift the rear. If we have the weight too high, the bike might steer nice, but it'll be difficult to pick up. If we have the weight really, really low, it'll be hard to turn and it'll understeer or plow forward. It'll just want to go straight on. So it's really crucial where we put the weight. Now obviously the ladder is a dramatic diagram. In racing, we're talking uh, one mil, two mil of changing where the weight and the ride height to get the bike to steer or not to steer. For example, on some race bikes, TT, BSB, World Supers, the fuel isn't actually stored in the fuel tank. The fuel is stored here underneath the seat in kind of a dummy tank because we want to get the weight a bit lower. We don't want it high up here because having the weight high also causes pitching problems. So you can imagine if we had a lot of weight here and we hit the brakes, we'll get a lot of fork dive. If we accelerate really hard, we'll get a lot of sit. We'll get the weight lower, we can reduce that, but then if we get it too low, the bike just wants to go straight on because we're at the bottom of the ladder again. Now this is a problem all manufacturers are looking at all the time. In BSB, I think the weight limit is 168 kilograms. If we went less and less and less, then that again would cause lots of wheelies, a lot of instability over rises and crests, which is one of the reasons that TT bikes don't worry too much about reducing the weight, because the more weight we have, the more stability we have. When a bike is fully fueled at the TT with 24 litres of fuel with a rider fully kitted, you can feel that that stability is there. When you're coming down after the second lap when your fuel is reduced, the bike tends to wheelie more and becomes a little bit more unstable. So weight is crucial where you put the bike, where it is, and this all depends on the style of bike, adventure, motocross, sports bike, cruiser. On a conventional road bike, this is the fuel tank. Let's say that's 17 litres, and that works out around 17 kilograms. So what's that, a small dog? We'll go with that. On a race bike, that can be 20 or 24 litres. For example, on a TT bike, it'll be 24 litres. Now we get into a sizable Labrador, that is basically sat on our lap. So the TT bike will move the fuel underneath the seat. This is the same in BSB and in World Supers and in MotoGP. The fuel becomes a lot lower. The problem with this is it increases the seat height, which is why it's not done so much on road bikes and it's an expensive way of producing a fuel tank. But again, we're always looking at where to put weight and where to move it. The other terminology you may have heard is called unsprung weight. This is essentially weight that is rotating. 
So these are the wheels. So this includes the wheel, uh, the tyre, and the brake discs, or discs. If we can reduce the weight of the Revolution, the unsprung weight, it will improve the performance and improve the handling because we have got less weight that is being rotated. On a race bike, you can feel the difference when we go from, say, a 330mm disc to a 320. We're just reducing the size of the brake disc, but you'll feel that. And again, if you go from standard wheels to carbon wheels, the, the difference is huge. You really don't appreciate the difference that a few kilograms will make in handling when you just change them in unsprung weight, which is tires, wheels, and discs, both front and back. So that is weight kind of simplified. How does that translate to you at home? Simply put, just think about where you're putting weight on the bike. If you're adding accessories, or you're fitting a race exhaust to reduce weight, or different wheels, different discs, or if you're adding luggage, just think about whereabouts you want to put that weight and where the most weight should be. If you've got any questions, get them below, and hopefully we'll be able to answer those in future videos.